Okay, I'm recording this video in Jasper Town site where there was a major fire in July 2024. Uh, right now it's September 29th, 2024, so just about two months after the fire. And this unit here is an Alberta Environment Air Monitoring Unit, which is monitoring air quality um, in the post-fire recovery time period. If I just spin around slowly, don't want to make everybody seasick. Uh, I'm just at the edge of really the most damaged part of Jasper Town site. It's the southwest corner. Uh, approximately a third of the town site was heavily affected by the wildfire. Uh, about 380 structures were lost, mostly houses, but also some commercial structures and um, critical infrastructure structures. If I just walk down the street here a little bit further, um, you can really see the extent of the damages. Uh, what you're seeing here are basically just the foundations of the houses. Anything flammable is, was consumed by the fire, trees, landscaping. Uh, so that really the only thing that's left here are concrete foundations, stone, stone facings, front steps and lots of metal, metal roofs, metal uh, infrastructure, metal support beams, um, heating and air conditioning, metallic piping, that sort of thing. So two months afterwards the area has been cordoned off. Uh, everybody's private property is now cordoned off and I now have to wipe the lens because it's raining. Hopefully that's a bit better. High quality video recording at its finest. Okay. Uh, so the area's been cordoned off. It's all private property. Uh, individual lease owners or lease holders. Um, all the land in Jasper Park is leased and the homes are owned in by private landowners or, or sorry, uh, homeowners. And so they have the right to rebuild on their leased land. Um, but of course it takes a long time for insurance companies to settle and right now a lot of the settlement is going on behind closed doors and uh, there's really not much <clears throat> reconstruction um, happening right now. Uh, I'll just lift up the camera and just show a couple of the houses. Uh, this one obviously had very impressive stone entranceway, stone front porch. And you can see the trees that are burned and they're starting to remove the trees. Um, and then right next door, literally right next door, is a house that managed to survive the intense heat and the 120 kilometer an hour winds that were really fanning this wildfire. Um, so this was a lightning caused fire. Uh, multiple lightning strikes from a storm then ignited wildfires and those wildfires grew rapidly in size and the storm itself was packing, as I said, 120 kilometer an hour winds. So that drove the the expansion of the wildfire very quickly. Um, there wasn't much time to evacuate. And here again, we're showing a house that managed to survive right next to one that didn't. Um, and if we, you know, I'll just segue for a little bit. If we try and think about the reasons why this house survived, um, it could be as something as minor as the landscaping or the way the landscaping was set apart from the house or away from the house. And it's possible that the home next door, actually, if we look at that house, we see a shrub that was growing up right next to the front porch. I don't know if you can see that right here. Um, so again, that could be something where the flames caught onto the shrub, then transferred to the house, and that was burned the house down. Whereas in this case, it looks like the landscaping is quite far away from the house. They also have an asphalt roof, which is pretty um, resistant to embers and, and wildfire. They have a stucco exterior. They have stone or concrete on the, in the base. So altogether, kind of a fire-resistant construction. Uh, and then again, right next door again, are two or three more houses that, that burned. Um, I'm seeing this caution tape all over the community. Um, a lot of the homes in this area were built 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, where asbestos was a really common construction material, especially for flooring and sometimes for roofing. 
And so anytime post-fire, anytime that those materials are detected, they put up a asbestos caution tape, just like this. I'll just go around the corner. Um, actually, before I go there, in front of, of almost every house, you'll see these little mementos or items that survived the fire. In this case, it looks like uh, a painting of Kluwani Lake. Okay, if I can zoom in. And part of that survived. And these artifacts that you see here were literally removed from the damaged homes by a company called Rubicon. Uh, Rubicon is a volunteer agency, um, mostly made up of volunteers that used to be either firefighters or ex-military or ex-police, uh, basically ex-first responders. And now they're playing a humanitarian role in post-disaster environments. So what they do is they suit up in hazmat suits and then they go deep into, uh, in this case, the foundation of the house. And I'll zoom in on it again. You can barely see it. Uh, that's the, the concrete foundation. And so what they'll do is they'll put a ladder down into the foundation, crawl down in their hazmat suits and respirators, and then sift through the ashes looking for mementos, um, keepsakes, anything that might have memories and value to the homeowners. And of course, you, you know, you see all the other debris here that they have to wade through. So Rubicon spent about five weeks, as far as I can tell, five or six weeks systematically going from house to house, uh, 350 homes, sifting through the, the basements and pulling out anything of value that they think the homeowners might want to save when they finally start to rebuild. So if I just move, this is an, now another property. Uh, you can see that they've saved a few items here. Um, they're almost unrecognizable. A few plates, uh, looks like a weight set, um, maybe some sort of a, t a tool. And I think this was some sort of a musical instrument, could be a piano, piano keys or piano strikers. You can tell I'm not a pianist. Uh, and a cookbook. Uh, so they're, they're really doing uh, a, a forward-thinking job, almost like archaeologists trying to pull out items that, that might have some sentimental value. Uh, the rain's really setting in now, so I think I will stop here. And I'll just leave you with the scenes of the fire.